What's up, everybody? It's Jeffrey Lyles. You are listening to Lyles Movie Files. Uh, I've been away for a while because I've been laid up in the hospital. But the boys have been holding it down, keeping me entertained on the text line that we do throughout the week. I'm back, and we're back for another episode. We are going to talk a lot about what went down over this weekend with DC's fandom and a few other interesting things as well. So without further ado, let's get on to the show. What's up, little brother? Good. Ready to ready podcast. Great. Gunner, how you doing, man? Doing great. Doing great. How's it going, man? I won't complain. Nobody cares. Hey, Jay King, what's up with you? Hey, likewise, man. Doing great. Nobody cares if you got any complaints. Yeah, we all dealing with something right in the world. Mm-hmm. Exactly. If you're living in the world today. Uh, let's get into it. So DC had been hyping up this DC fandom for weeks they had done an impressive amount of coverage throughout so many different arenas like i was watching the nba playoffs they had commercials during that which is a ton of money to spend um they were they were just everywhere like if you didn't know this is coming you weren't watching tv in the weeks leading up to it and excuse me so they broke it up to two parts the first one was basically their movie section uh they talked a little bit of comics a little bit of tv but it was primarily all about what was coming up whenever we can go back to the movies again and this first week or first uh 24-hour marathon because it was like 12 hours and then they just repeated it was a huge major success they had 22 million global views for it which is crazy I was watching as much as I possibly could because it was really, I thought they did a great job with the setup and how they had it, you know, kind of did this little virtual terror drone thing. Um, And they had different people interacting. I thought they did a good job with the green screen. So even though you knew they weren't in the same room, it looked like it. And it just had this big kind of production feel to it that I thought looked good. They had really smooth transitions from one thing to the next. I I was really a fan of it. And to me, as someone who's never actually gone to San Diego Comic-Con, I thought this was an excellent way to bring that experience to people. I mean, they did little interludes where they had people in cosplay. They showed different people's drawings. I really dug it. And like I said, I watched a ton of it. So I was definitely responsible for some of those views. And they talked a lot about everything. Let's start with the one that that's supposed to come out this year, the Wonder Woman 1984. So uh, director Patty Jenkins still said, yeah, this movie is coming to theaters whenever it can come to theaters. And the question I think I keep asking you guys, are you still interested in this movie or are you still excited? We saw the latest trailer where we finally got to see what Cheetah is going to look like. Cheetah looked like Cheetah should you know, for whatever that's worth. It wasn't the uh, loincloth outfit version with the little cat ears, but like the wild cheetah animal kind of version that we've seen in the comics. I thought it looked dope and I am ready to see this movie again, but man, I really hope it's not like another four or five months before we can actually see it. What do you guys think? Gunner, let's start with you. I'm I'm down. I mean, it looked pretty, you know, that, uh, Keeping people's attention with, like, trailer one, two, and three is really important in this day and age with the COVID, and we don't know if we're going back to theaters or they're going to release it or whatever, you know, depending on which movie we're talking about, right? So I think it's good now. I mean, before we were like, okay, why do they need four trailers? It's ridiculous. Now, yeah, we kind of need that. We need to keep our attention on it. And this thing has been, especially for Wonder Woman, because we've been talking about it for pretty much a year, right? (laughs) So, yeah, I think now the technique of several trailers is a good thing. Um, I'm excited. I think it's good. Um, um, The CGI looks good. Um, It doesn't look funky. It's not on somebody's stupid costume. It's actually for everybody. Um, The cheetah outfit looks, or CGI slash outfit looks good. You get to see the progression. Um, Still curious about the storyline, like why is old boy back in 84, like all that stuff. So, it, 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 I think it's doing a good job of, of keeping everybody's attention. I'm still excited. Cool. Jace, how about you? I, I, I When I saw it, uh, after like uh, Patty and uh, Phoenix, I mean, I'm sorry, Serena's conversation, I was like, oh, that was inter- that, 
I mean, that was entertaining too. But then you see the trailer for Wonder Woman is like, oh, okay. I mean, like very much like Gunner says, like the trailers, I wasn't really still not sure on the whole uh, Steve Trevor, but I think I see how it happens. And I'm, I, I let, it's like putting a little bit of, into Maxwell Lord. I'm like, okay, I kind of see how this could get really good. And mm-hmm. seeing Maxwell Lord and seeing Cheetah, because I really, I thought, because initially, I think one, like the last trailer, they're like, oh, you can see Cheetah for the first time. And it was literally uh, Kristen Wiig just uh, like blocking. Uh, the last one, I'm like, that's not cheating. I don't care about seeing Chris. Yeah, right, Wig, right, right. You know, everyday costume that any girl could watch. I mean, where? Uh, thankfully, not everyone does that. But looking at, like, actually seeing CGI, and it's much, it looks better than Steppenwolf of Justice League, which is always my DC bad bar of what a villain should look like. <laughs> exactly. So that, right there, I'm like, okay, we're cool. Like, you, you met that low bar. And since you have the same director as the last one, I'm still interested. I'm, yeah, I'm, it's it's interesting listening to Patty Jenkins talk because it's, you know, we don't have a lot of women directors heading up these comic book films, let alone doing a sequel to one. And she's really passionate about it. And I get excited listening to her talk about everything with Wonder Woman and she's just so like into it and it's like yes you get everything that makes Wonder Woman special that makes her interesting character you get it and I always love listening to the directors who get that about especially these comic book characters because we've seen you know with Brian Singer and the X-Men what happens right. when, when a director doesn't get it well, let me, oh, I was I, about I to want, jump in with that because <laughs> I was like well unlike Brian Singer and X-Men right. yeah, I'm no actually trying to jump into how one I'm sure we're going to talk about, but it was refreshing. It's like when she's like, "Hey, the first thing I almost like one of the first things I did after getting the call to direct this movie was call Linda Carter to say, "Hey, I'm yeah. not making the wheels. Like I am making new, but still you know, a nice homage to what you did because you were my inspiration okay. for liking this character." And, I'm like, and that was cool because it's like it's somebody who's a fan of another version of it. They understand. I can't do that over again, and I don't need to, but I don't need to trash it just because my version is different. Yeah. Javon, what you think? Or were you paying attention to DC fandom like us crazy dudes this weekend? Uh, here and there, spotily, you know. Um, I, I watched the trailer. I watched, what, the trailer for that and the Batman, Wonder Woman 84 and the Batman. Um. I'm eager to see Wonder Woman. I've been eager to see it since I saw it come out. It's been my favorite DC movie of the last, what, 10 years or so or more? Shoot. Um, I'm eager to see it. I um, I love Maxwell. I love how Maxwell Lord is giving me young Trump vibes, man. He's <laughs> He's, he really he's looking like 40, he's really like 30 years old. It's, it's hilarious <laughs> because that character has been around for so long, yet he feels mm-hmm. even more relevant now. Which is kind of like, oh, okay. I kind of get why you guys went with this 80s setting because it, it works in the Trump era. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So I'm I'm eager to see it, man. I'm eager to see Batman. Hey, look. Hold on. We're going to get to Batman. We're going to get to Batman. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, 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 yeah that's, that's the build up for that one because, yeah, <laughs> that was serious. So, yeah, so we got that. I was looking forward to seeing that. Um, Then we, uh, got some more information about this flash movie and i think i've been pretty clear that i'm not the biggest fan of ezra ezra miller's take on the flash but he seems really into the flash and the character so i'm kind of torn because it's like i don't think his performance is great or at least his performance in justice league was great also because i think they had him playing a character that's not barry allen um but you know he had the flashbacks i was like "Eh, okay maybe maybe i'm into this movie a little bit more and now we got the news that batman is going to fix that horrific suit that flash had and i get that he made the costume you know as a kid he didn't have like a super budget to design a cool looking outfit like batman or superman but man i hated that outfit so i was excited to see that we're going to get a new one that looks more like a costume Batman's going to design it so it should look cool 
and Ben Affleck's going to be back. We, you know, we recorded last week and then the next day, Hey, Ben Affleck's coming back to play Batman in, in uh, this flash multiverse film. I'm very excited about Ben Affleck coming back. I don't think I've made a secret that he is my favorite of the big screen versions of Batman because of the way he's portrayed his version and he's not doing the the voice like Christian Bale, which was always <laughs> the damn fault of Christian Bale's version. I love everything else, but the voice was killing me. Or I'm not dressing hockey bats. It's just like, uh, all right. But yeah, so this would be good. My only thing is they're like, yeah, but he's not going to be back for any other films. I'm like, nah, dude, stop saying that. Let, let's see how this goes. Let's see what the reaction is to the Snyder Cut of Justice League before we say no more Affleck, no more Bat, Bat, Batfleck. Uh, Jace, what do you think about this Flash news? You excited? And of course, we're going to get Michael Keaton in the mix too. So we're going to have two versions of Batman running around here. I'd still love to see Jeffrey Dean Morgan as uh, Flashpoint Batman too. He's already got the mustache, so let's make it happen. But what do you think? Uh, this is what this was kind of the lead up of what I was about to say. I didn't want to jump uh, over a point. I enjoyed listening to the, their uh, commentary. But one thing that kind of really kind of scared me was the director kind of pointed out like, oh, what really got her into the flash? No, the screenwriter. Screenwriter. Oh, the screen. Yeah, even worse actually. <laughs> but the screenwriter who said, hey, what really got me into the the Flash as a character was Flashpoint. And it's like, yeah, that's almost the end of Barry Allen and crying all this crazy stuff versus Barry Allen from before that like blackest night i mean at the very least like you know i mean him coming back after a uh, crisis like that was i mean jeff john stuff like that was really good flash and to say oh i, I popped in a flash point is like uh you mean after he screws everything up uh okay <laughs> yeah it, like, was, it was a really interesting comment i was like whoa <laughs> that's very late in flash and yeah. i don't necessarily know if if and I hope, because you know who knows. But I really hope that let me let me pull up her name because I hate saying her or she because it's really easy. Christina Hodson. She also wrote the screenplay for Bumblebee, uh, Harley Quinn, and a few other DC films too. So she's she's kind of new, but she's done some things that uh, she's like an up and coming in yeah, terms but- of. Our up and comings haven't been blockbuster gangbusters. It's like Bumblebee was. I mean, I don't remember how much it did, but Bumblebee I Bumblebee was I'm, okay. It, it. I think that just suffered because people were like, uh, another movie of uh, these transform these Transformer films. Yeah, I've seen these. These suck. So I, I can't. But it was on. the best of those Transformer movies. Yeah, it was That's way what, better. It was way it. better. And, yeah. and she had like an awesome sequence of Cybertron and it was, I mean, it was that few moments of it was like the Transformers I've always wanted to see on the big screen. And I was like, no, no, don't go to Earth because I hate Earth versions of Transformers. So <laughs> yeah. I don't but care they, about they, Shia LaBeouf. I want to see Optimus Prime like, like Megatron. The next she one is, loves what she's doing. She And she yeah, pays she attention. She tells the story of what you know. Mm-hmm. That's what sets her apart. God, if she could get the X Men next. Okay, wait. A minute. Okay, Javon, let me. <laughs> That'd be me, nice. Javon, like, so you probably you, sounds like you might have a better context than me. Did you see Harley Quinn: Birds of Prey? Because I, if that's the next project she was on, it's like that wasn't something that one to touch. And, like, I, look, I, I'll say this about Birds of Prey. I I wanted to like it. I wanted to love it. I wanted to love it. Not like it. I wanted to love it. I like it. But that's the thing. It let me down because the it, 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 it was such a disjointed story and they tried to bring it. When they tried to bring it all together, you didn't care. You're only yeah. invested in Harley Quinn. Everybody right. else was kind of just throw-ins, right? So when it came time for them to come together and be the band of heroines, you didn't give a shit. You just wanted to see more Harley Quinn. It was all about Harley Quinn. <laughs> I wanted you to know, see a it Joker, was a but I was afraid of it. Because it was like, mm-hmm. she was already in a, in a team movie with Suicide Squad. So what do we do with her next film? Put her in a team one. 
And it's like, well, nobody wanted to see that. They wanted to see Harley Quinn in a standalone film. And I know the exactly. intent was to be like, hey, let's let's spotlight some more of the, the, the women of the DC universe, but do them in a separate movie because Harley Quinn has nothing to do with They ever go Birds together? I, have, no. I don't remember a like, comic no. where let's just have everybody in one, you know, these right. four or whatever. That they, <sighs> in, and then there wasn't even the full Birds of Prey, right? So, I mean, yeah, I had exactly. no idea. It wasn't. Just based off of that. Like, there was just like, I don't really want to see harley quinn movie anyway and we're um, i think it's target. great that it's out there but i am not the target audience then you're gonna throw in my favorite birds of prey as like side characters yeah, yeah i'm good <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Oh, yeah and it was like oh man that's exciting black and you're gonna be a black woman ah, but she's gonna be on the thanks. back burner at harley quinn right <laughs> i'm like thanks that's pretty mm, no thank you but people liked it hey. Yeah, good for them. Well, I was so, planning to watch it to tell Jace what I thought, but I will watch it this weekend and have my review up. So, yeah, I will let you know for HBO, sure. So it's free for me. Yeah, exactly. I recorded it on HBO. I was like, this is perfect. It's like, dude, good. this I is got awesome. Book. Yeah. It's not Max, but it's HBO. <laughs> yeah. So, anyhow. So, Flash is... is I'm more excited about Flash than I was because, you know... Andy Machete has done the It films and that dude knows how to deliver on that end. And I think he can handle the spectacle of making a Flash movie work. So I want to see what happens here. So let's go on here because, you know, there's so much more stuff from fandom to break down and discuss. Anybody else excited about seeing Ben Affleck or was I the only one? You're not the only one. I didn't mind seeing him. I thought he played, like you said, he played the role he was supposed to play. I don't like that Batman. I'm like, then you're not a comic book fan. You just wanted to see some Batman from the animated series, which is fine. No, I always tell people, I'm like, then you don't know what you're talking about. We saw it in Crisis on Infinite Earth. That was as much Batman live action (laughs) Kevin Conroy as we're going to get. Yeah, exactly. uh, Yeah. Like, you know, my thought about. I thought on Affleck's Batman was if you were to replace Christian Bale with Ben Affleck for Nolan's Dark Knight series, granted, you ask you can ask a lot of people they're going to say that the Batman Nolan series is the, one, some of the best comic book movies ever made. Mm-hmm. If you would have added Affleck to that mix, I think it's hands down. I think I it would have it would have been goes without saying. Let's say this. I think the point is everybody. Some folks just hate Ben Affleck. I mean, they've hated yeah. him. He's he was dating. Ever since he started dating J Lo, it's that's like that's it has nothing to do with those Like I, I, I hate. And I it's just based on nothing. Bro, and most of the people we tend to ignore. Might be a based off a of Daredevil. So the last comic book thing, but it's like. <laughs> but here's the thing, like. People have Daredevil done crappy. Daredevil was just crap. But Daredevil. It was terrible. He, people have made themselves a lot better. I mean, look at. Chris Evans. Chris Evans. Thank you. Chris look Evans. At, yeah. Well, look at Ryan Reynolds. Thank you. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. People, especially when you cross that Ryan Reynolds over DC. Even, and he makes look, that. But man. even still. No, my point is, like, people have been in crappy movies and done crappy jobs in crappy movies. Thank too. you. Let it and go. then they come back and they're like, yo. This Batman would have been great. This Batman was, you know, this Batman is, is good. I think I would have liked it. You know what I mean? And, and you know, but no one's going to say that now, except for maybe you, Javon, me, and Jeff and Jay. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just like, <laughs> I just don't understand why people would suck at that. Would he, would he be better than Christian Bale? Not in Batman Begins. I like the portrayal there. Yeah. The other two, especially that last one, Fighting Bane. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I, I'm even willing to give him begins because I, I guess but I'm wondering is that is that a, why do you say that for begins, Gunner? Not young yeah, enough. Young I don't Wayne. think. Yeah. And he's even a more seasoned actor to where he can't act young anymore. Mm-hmm. You get what I mean? Like that's just not him anymore. I haven't seen him in anything where he acts like super young maybe the accountant but then what's that 40 like come on you know, you know what i mean mm-hmm. like you know what I, mean? So, I, mean, I think I, the town was probably the last one he got away the with town was the him. last one he got a, yeah. away with playing but he was all he was doing in the town was playing a guy he grew up with 
or himself right. at that age, you know? That's not hard. Um, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, not hard, yeah. you know? And I, I, I understand. I feel what you're saying with that. But even with Bale as a as young Batman, as young Bruce Wayne, I, I don't find any problems with – I just think Affleck could have – he could have did it too. I think he could have done it too. And for some you know what would have been the like, best of both Affleck worlds? Put himself there. If Bale played Bruce Wayne and Affleck played Batman. Because Bale, Bale had that Bruce Wayne <laughs> suave deal, kind of swarmy. Oh, yeah. I got a lot of money. I yeah. got this thing. And Affleck had the like the physicality and kind of gruffness of Batman. It yeah. just worked. It was like, oh man, this this dude would beat you down. Like that fight scene when he came to get Martha was right. so. I mean, it was Perfect. like this is Batman it saved the screen. theatrical movie. Yeah. yeah. yeah so. All right, well let's 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 get into another appearance of Ben Affleck now. Uh Justice League Snyder Cut had its trailer. Listen. I don't think I've ever been excited to see a movie that I've already seen and enjoyed <laughs> like I did after watching this trailer. I was like, shoot, this is a whole new movie. I can't wait to see this. What did y'all think of this thing? I mean, Dark Side looked like he's suing an axe about the mope out Superman yet again. Why right? killing Superman twice, Zach? Um, Steppenwolf looked cool. Uh, I mean, Superman in a black outfit. Steppenwolf didn't look like a goof. And it just looked like, oh, wow, this is a totally different and probably better movie than the one we got. Look at the character development that they even like hinted right, even at in the trailer. In the trailer. Yeah. I'm like, oh, Flash by himself is not just that. Oh, okay, everybody's kind of doing their thing. Cyborg might actually have an arc. Like, you Mm -hmm. know, oh, my gosh. So I was just like, this is a movie that we probably should have had. Yeah, after that Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice Ultimate Edition, I was like, whatever, however long it takes for Zack Snyder to tell the story he actually has, let's get that, please. I'll sit and watch it because, gosh. I'm still like, what the heck were y'all thinking putting out that theatrical version of that? Um, yeah, but there was a lot. And so we know now it's going to be four hours, an hour block of episodes. Hopefully at some point for those of us who don't have HBO Max, we can buy the Snyder Cut and see it like a Godfather style and watch it all in four hour glory. Jace, what do you think about it? Uh I, is, I think uh, I, I had to copy uh, Gunner after he had recommended doing this. He put it, uh, he casted it from his phone onto the TV. I had to do that too, because yeah. that trailer really looks like, oh, like I mean, just seeing like Cyber and uh, playing football, and then mm-hmm. seeing like his dad, and there's like, wait a minute, how did? <laughs> I, I think right. what gets me, <laughs> every time. It's like, I don't know the brains of DC. It's like, Zack Snyder will put maybe a too long a story in, in the movie. Mm-hmm. But he mm-hmm. puts the story in, and then they cut it to put the action. It's like, we actually yeah, they cut like, the wrong parts. All us <laughs> comic book people just want to see shit blow up. And it's like, no, mm-hmm. we actually want to be able to be say, hey, I can defend this as actually a good movie, and there's some shit blowing up at the end. Right. If you take out the story, it's like, oh, wow, we got to see Doomsday blow up a whole lot of crap. It's like, no, mm-hmm. we needed to see why Superman and Batman have beef. Like, the actual part. <laughs> exactly. part the, the, story. Story. <laughs> like, the actual yeah, instances like the of actual Batman story. versus Superman. Like, don't do it. It's called it's a like, story <laughs> arc. It needs to yeah. arc. Right. Like, <laughs> not having that, just screwed him. It's like, then, yes, it is. it's like, just seeing that, it's like, just looking at how that version, just by that trailer, you're like, even in, like, just leaving Darkseid and Steppenwolf out, which, I'm, I mean, hey, they, they've been able to redo at least the Steppenwolf, but Darkseid is like, you guys were supposed to be building towards the Thanos to this universe, and you didn't do anything, you just mentioned him, but Zack Snyder actually had the dude who played him. Like, how do you take... It's, yeah, and he freaking looks like Darkseid. Yeah, and it's like... Wait. Like, how do you, just by doing that, you're just like, we don't care. We think we're going to change the direction of whole the whole version of this DC universe. And it's like, because it's too dark. It's like, we don't mind a dark universe. 
we just need to have a little hope at the end. It's like, hey, we see a you know Superman in a black costume that we saw in the trailer. Yeah, hey, we, we want to see that. Like, hey, we didn't, we weren't really sure why you killed him after his second movie, but you did it. We want to see where you go from here. It's like, yeah, fix it. Thanks. Like, Fix it. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, it's just like, to be honest, it's like you telling me, and especially with the rest of it, like listening to other stuff at DC fandom, it's like, if you are a DC Universe fan, you're going to want to switch your money over here. It's like, I, I'm just like, okay, yeah, if you, you give me a four hour Zack Snyder cut, I will pay for the trial. I mean, I will pay for DC, I mean, um, HBO Max. HBO I'll, Max. I'll, I'm there, like, cause switching. that looks like something yeah. worth buying. I'm definitely switching. I just haven't had a chance to, but now we're a real reason to. Cause I was like, well, everything's on both. Yeah. I don't really need to switch yet. Everything I, ha- I mean, I have HBO. I'm good. Like, you know what I mean? I'm like, eh. and then this came out. I'm like, oh, they're gonna incrementally do it. Okay, is this gonna be on regular HBO? No. Oh, well, guess I gotta switch over because <laughs> <laughs> DC app. I haven't, you know. You guys will be watching like Red Sun Superman or Superman Red Sun, and then I'm like, I'm just waiting for it to come on DC app. Oh, well, I guess I better go buy Seven it. Seven months later. By the time I buy- yeah. Hmm? Yeah, and I'm like, well, then that's pointless. And I have yeah, every exactly. I pretty much have. Yeah, I pretty much own most of the movies that are already on there. The only mm-hmm. thing I really watch it for is Superboy, and you know that's just me paying it for it for Amazon individually. I really wanted mm-hmm. it. So I'm sitting here like, why am I paying monthly for this when I can pay monthly for Max? How much is Max? What's right. the price point? I don't know. You know, it's still, I don't care no, until I, they have content that I want. <laughs> but right. I think it's I'm like on the seven ninety nine price point, maybe 12 uh, I don't think it's too place. ridiculous. Oh, it's yeah. not an easy cancel. Hmm. Oh, and, and you well, know what? Oh, is it, on my, is it on my Samsung TV? Because DC app, after being out for two years, right? has not uh, ended up on my Samsung uh, TV, and I have a new one. <laughs> they still don't have a PlayStation app. It was just like, we put it oh, in like HBO, I mean, uh, Apple TV, and that's it. It's like, you got to, I mean, you have to understand. I, I'm, I'm not even going to say they, just didn't, they must not have gotten their subscriber numbers and didn't decide to put any new effort into it other than making the shows. Okay, according to a quick no, search, on, search on Google, it's $15 per month. So Ooh. it's it's gonna be one of those deals. Put in more content, and I'll check it out for a month. But they got friends, dude. I mean, it's, <laughs> I, I I still don't get. Like, you know, we, we, I need I need a lot of original content, not stuff that I own on DVD and Blu-ray. But yeah, Javon, what do you think of the trailer? And as always, the case. Um, exactly. Hey, look, Friends is on TBS right now. Friends is on right. TBS again. Um. <laughs> I thought it was this is what we should have seen from the beginning, you know. Yeah, dude. I, I, I've been feeling like that since it was announced. This is what we should have seen from the beginning. And granted, the screen, the runtime seems daunting in four hours, but you've pissed away four hours on other things. How many football games have we watched have gone into overtime, you know? And right. we we pissed away four hours watching other things, you know, <laughs> doing mm-hmm. other things. I would sit through it. I would definitely sit through it if it's if it's done right. A movie is, it doesn't matter the time. If you're entertained, if you're engrossed, you will watch it. And if that's it, then we're going to watch, period. It was interesting to me, like, uh, how Zack Snyder keeps saying how Ray Fisher, who plays Cyborg, is the heart of the film. And just looking at the trailer, I'm like, it looks like he's by himself at this grave site. Is this uh, his mom's grave? Is he digging up Superman? Like, there's so much stuff that really apparently got cut. And we've had all this stuff where Ray, where Fisher's been like trashing Joss Whedon, saying it was a toxic mm-hmm. work environment, and Warner Brothers is launching an investigation well. now. And it's like, well, geez. Yeah. I mean, just from that trailer, it's like, well, I'd be pissed off too if my entire arc got cut so I could just be that guy in the movie. I mean, he had some right. stuff. And it's like, geez, he had a whole He's arc. Just the black guy in the movie at this point. Sorry, that's why I've always said, I'm like, they do cyborg wrong, except for on Teen Titans and Teen Titans Go. Yeah, it yeah, definitely I mean, didn't look like Zack Snyder was doing him wrong, so I'm encouraged no. by that. That's where I'm like, word. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So very excited to, to get that Snyder cut and watch it, however long it takes me to see it. 
Well, fellas, I guess there's nowhere else to go at this point. Oh, wait, wait. There is one more thing. So that Suicide Squad, we didn't see a trailer, but we got the massive cast reveals in terms of who they're playing. And oh my gosh, are these characters imminently killable? It's not like a lot of A-list characters, heroes or villains. It's guys like uh, Polka Dot Man, Ratcatcher 2, character the javelin characters that are very easily disposed of and you're like oh wow that's crazy i can't believe it uh james gunn said it was the most fun he's had working on a film considering how much fun i had watching the guardians of the galaxy films i think this is going to be really interesting and i love the fact that there is some continuity between this one and the first film with uh, viola davis back as amanda waller margot robbie back as harley quinn and um, Joel Kinnaman is Rick Flagg and Shia Courtney as Boomerang. I like that. I wish Katana was back, but, you know, I think they've got enough characters to kill off, so it won't be that big a deal. What you guys think about these reveals? Did you care? Are you looking forward to it? Or what's your take on it? Honestly, look, I mean, Suicide Squad could have been a better movie. I mean, and yeah. if you have somebody who wants to make it, fun, I mean, not just the Harley Quinn show, but actually, and then, like, kind of go with the theme of, like, these guys are, you know, a bunch of criminals, crooks, who are disposable to Amanda Waller to do stuff that the Justice League, they can't have the Justice League do. That could, I mean, it really could be fun. It's like, I mean, just looking at some of the action scenes, like, kind of when, they, when James Gunn was revealing some of the shoots on stuff, it's like, Oh, that looks like they're going to be doing something really ridiculous, like, but not stupid. This could be a fun movie. And it's like, and it's not a bunch of whatever those things were. And uh, yeah, that was first, a mistake. <laughs> and the belly dancing of death. <laughs> and and the belly well, dancing uh, of death. And, uh, what was that? Queen of Queen of the Dam. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Bad, bad oh. Call. Yeah. Bad yeah. Movie. Please, why did you remind me of that? How we I'm all sorry. got I apologize. Doked on that movie. We all got okie doked on that movie. That was like our first, hey, black people, go watch this. Wait, it's, we only have Aaliyah in there for four minutes. There you go. Hey, and that was every every 16 to 25 year old black man was like, yes. Wait a minute. How old was R. Kelly at that point? Exactly. Yeah. Oh, he, they've been done too, by that. Too, too soon. Like too soon. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Exactly. I know he was watching it front and center. <laughs> he oh. was helping pick out the outfit. All right, so now let's get into this the, the big event, the main event. They saved it for last. Uh, the Batman trailer. Aisha Taylor, Tyler, uh, talked with Matt Reeves, who really had me excited just from how into batman he was i mean he just was yeah he's a detective and this is going to be the mm-hmm. first batman film to make use of this and it's like yeah because he oh, rarely yeah. does anything like a detective in these films right. and i was like wow and and just how excited he was i mean he was really really you know like sometimes you, you see these guys like oh yeah it's gonna be cool we're gonna do something he was just like, oh, yeah, we got this. We're going to have a whole different visual. It's not going to look like Chicago or New York. Uh, we're going to fill in green screens to make it look different. And, and there it is. Like, okay. Tim Burton style. Because that's what Tim Burton Yeah. Did. He, he was like, I'm just going to have a whole different style for it. And it. it's year two of Batman. So I like that because it's a setting we haven't seen. We're going to have a flawed Batman who makes mistakes which is great. He's not going to be that super perfect dude who knows everything and can do anything. Um, and yeah. And and then we actually got to see the trailer and he was like, you know, this is only 25% of the film. I was sold with 20% of this trailer. I mean, it was like, dude, I didn't even recognize Colin Farrell playing Penguin. Uh, Gunner, you were like, the Riddler looks like he's doing a hush type thing. It really had a different vibe than any other Batman thing that we've seen before, which is interesting because, I mean, we've seen so many Batman, like, TV shows, movies, specials on other films. It's like, what can you do new with Batman? And Matt Reeves is like, yeah, I I know exactly how to do a new Batman. And it looks very exciting. Uh, Javon, what do you think of this trailer? 
I loved it. I um, this is the kind of Batman I've I've always wanted to see a dark Batman like this is not and and that's what Nolan gave us in the last iteration. I appreciate each of the Batman films except for the god awful one with they put nipples on the bat suit. What was that? Batman. Batman and Robin. Batman and Robin. Batman and Robin. Please do not forget a Batman oh forever. God. Batman and Robin. Batman, Batman forever. forever downfall. Just the two soundtracks. Oh. Just get the soundtrack. You'll be fine. The Riddler. Ever watch the soundtracks? I, the Riddler. Riddler. Oh, Jim Carrey. I, you know, I, those it. those are going to go down as the worst of the Batman movies. I don't, I don't care what yeah, they do. Unquestionably. Um. Yeah, unless they come out and do like, unless they come out and try to top making a worse movie than those two, those are going to stand out. I can't even but imagine that would be possible. My, I, don't, I can't even imagine it's possible, right, Jeff? Um, this trailer, now hopefully the film's live, the film lives up to the trailer, but this trailer, this is the first time in a while I've been like excited to go to the movie, to go to the movie. Like, I really want to go and see this in the theaters. When I saw the just the Batmobile, it looks like an old ta- uh, char- uh, Tantrum Challenger, like from the 70s. Yeah, like, not uh, the with, tank. Ben Diesel was driving. Yeah, not the tank. Yeah. I don't care about that. It was goofy. I want to see the Batmobile, <laughs> and that's what it looked like. Um, when At the end, when he says, who they, like, who the hell are you? And he beats the skin off this oh, dude. Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> I am vengeance. I was like, yeah, I got to go see it. I got to go see it. Period. So I'm yeah. I, I got to see that. It was interesting. We haven't heard any mention of Joker, but those dudes were clearly dressed up like Joker <laughs> goons. I'm like, hey, well, hey now. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. I can't wait. Chase, what do you think? Uh, I'm going to use the uh, phrase from In Living Color. Hated it. Okay, no, I really didn't. Um, I <laughs> was ready to hate him. Like again, I think we talked about this a couple weeks ago. I was like, oh man, Robert Pattinson talking about he isn't working out. Oh man, this dude's gonna look like a chump. Oh man, this man, it, it, that's, this is already turning turn me against this film. After seeing him beat like to beat the heck out of the dude, actually come in there talking to the cops like he's a detective. Like, what does this mean? It's like it was like, mm-hmm. oh okay. And then, like, Jeff, I mean, like you said, Jeff, like, I had to, it was like, I was like, wait, that dude's Colin Farrell? Like, oh, shoot. Like, y'all put money and time into making him not look like Colin Farrell. Like, right. so he can actually get a time that, like, a role to shine with for a couple of years that he didn't get in a, the Harry Potter film. I'm like, oh, this oh, could be gosh, good. that was, geez. you know, every, every, that was, that was, gosh, dude. I really, really, really enjoyed his role in that. I was like, what y'all doing? That was criminal. Anyway. So then if he gets to, I mean, he's such a, I mean, he is a good actor. So if you let him grow into that Riddler, Riddler I mean, I'm sorry, not Riddler, but mm-hmm. Penguin role, I'm like, uh, this could be, I mean, this could be the next, we try and start comparing this. If And I, I know we're making way too big of out of the trailer. But if it lives up to this trailer, we will be talking about, is this one better than no? Like, I think that's where we'll have a comparison. Mm-hmm. Like, because it, it looks like a very, and this could be the dude who literally grows into the next Batman after Affleck in the Justice League. And it's like... This They've already Batman. said that this is a totally different Batman from that universe. And I thought it was really interesting where the president of Warner Brothers said that this the whole concept of the multiverse allows them to explore different worlds. So Robert Pattinson's Batman is different from the Jason Gall Ezra version of the justice league. And I was like, Oh, don't you mean Henry Ray and Affleck? But yeah, he was like, that's a totally separate one. So we're not going to see Pattinson interact with those characters. I mean, you know, he's not the Batman for them. See that. I mean, I mean, okay. But where it's like you need to have once, once I mean like after next year you need to let the people know or after Flash who the next Batman in the Justice League is going to be. I mean they need to start working on that casting now ASAP. Hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So yeah, to be okay. Michael Keaton. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I don't know what they're doing with that because it's like, how would you go from Affleck to a older Michael Keaton? It doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. Right. But okay. I like Michael Keaton, and you know they're gonna use a stunt guy anyway, so it's not like, oh man, I can't imagine him doing this stuff. That's Batman, so he could beat up dudes in his sixties, I guess. So yeah, and um, every other iteration. So. Exactly. I I had something, but I want to save it for next next week. But Boom. I I started watching uh, the Flash season six. Uh, one the the good folks at Warner Brothers sent me uh, the the Blu-ray so I could review it, which I've just about done. And one of the bonus features is they included a disc of Crisis on Infinite Earth. So you can just watch that by itself. That's just basically to me a huge selling point for any of this season's shows because it's like, great, I don't need to watch. You know, I don't have to buy a separate disc. I can just say, hey, look here. And I went into Crisis with a lot of expectations, partly my fault because I reread Crisis right before it. And I was like, getting all hyped up, like, hey, what are you going to put in here? And I really, um, I just finished the Flash episode, which is the third one, I guess. And I really enjoyed it more than I did the first time around. And I thought it was good. Like, they did a lot of nods to the old one. But I was like, oh, but you're missing this, you're missing that, you should be doing this, this would be cooler. I didn't watch it this time like that. And I was just kind of like, okay, this is your story. But with two more episodes to go, I'm still thinking they really missed the opportunity with the Anti-Monitor. Because yep. I don't like the fact that they had Lex just say, hey, I decided to write my name in the book. And that's the way they get rid of that Superman. Because it would have made way more sense to me, of course, to have Anti-Monitor kill Superman and really get over how strong and powerful it is. And I think they really did a lot of shortcuts to try to hide action sequences. I mean, they when they went for it, they really did. But I feel like that whole thing just really shortchanged the importance of how evil and powerful the Anti-Monitor is, as opposed to just a dude with a bad design who looks like whack uh, Thanos in need of a suntan. <laughs> so I know you guys were not prepared to talk about that, but um, check it out if you get those Blu-rays or those seasons, because I had some interesting thoughts on it, rewatching it. Did y'all have any just from your recollection of it? I don't remember liking three. Three was the episode one. with Flash. So it was, they had the 90s Flash show up. They had Black Lightning oh, show up. Oh, I love three. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Three so was that, great. That when, yeah, that's when Flash, they, they switched the uh, who dies in Flash. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so they was really like, a well, lot they of switch the, it. Yeah. They just did it differently. Right. They did an no, over on good. us. Yeah. Yeah, and at the end of that episode, I was like, well, oh, no, this is the right way to go, fellas. I was like, oh. Right. I was like, well, where do they go from here? And yeah. You know, they kind of went all over the place. Right. Yeah, yeah. It was four I didn't like. I was like, yeah, I'm like, sure four is ended. The, yeah, four is whack. But it, yeah. 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 Four four is problematic because it's like, no, you guys should be doing this and y'all are wasting time on stuff that doesn't matter. Um, but yeah. And Black Lightning and Diggle gave the black dude nod, like, what's up, what's up? Yeah, I love was... that because this is like, yeah, that's what we would do if we were the only black dudes in the room. That's literally <laughs> what we would do if we were the only black dudes in the superhero game right now on this show, right. dealing yeah. with the crisis. Exactly. So, so yeah, but check but it out when, when it comes out one. again. Right. I just got this gun and I do my thing. Uh, but yeah, so check that out. So, fellas, um, it's that time of the week. Do you have any nominees? For dummy of the week, Jace, let me start with you. Oh, let's see which my I'm gonna go with my PC version of dummy of the week. Uh, in no, you know, I, I'm gonna actually pass on dummy of the week because it, it it isn't gonna be as funny as I I think I want it to be. Uh, oh well, actually, I've, I've changed my mind. I hate to do this, um, but during the uh, my dummy of the week is whichever person, I, and I know we usually don't do this, but this is my one time I can slightly get into politics because it messes with the entertainer and it's kind of funny. But my dummy of the week is whoever decided that they needed to talk about Cardi B on the Republican convention because Cardi B is actually you know avid internet user and can pull stuff up 
Um, but somebody decided to talk about her video that everybody hates and secretly every man and probably a lot of women have watched the video like 20 times. Uh, but somebody said we need, you know, more people not, you know, being that uh, WAP, you know, role models and not WAP. And Cardi decided to pull up uh, uh, saying like, uh, do you mean like the first former, first, I mean, the current first lady? And I was like, oh, no, I don't mean that. And then Cardi's like, oh, do you mean like these pictures here? Uh, I haven't heard a rebuttal, but that pretty much is the mic drop on that one. So whatever idiot decided to do that and decided to make her have a little bit of fun, they are my dummy of the week. My dummy of the week is CBS for shortcutting their CBS all access program. I had to, they had a free month. So if you want to check out anything you can, I think it's still up, but they're deciding because, hey, we have no shows thanks to this stupid coronavirus. They're putting their CBS All Access original shows on the fall schedule. So they're going to do Star Trek Discovery, one of the main selling points of that thing, and uh, one day at a time in Manhunt to fill out the September and October schedule. And honestly, that's not a good move because that's, that's the president precedent of, hey, I don't need to wait for these shows anymore. I don't need to pay for these shows. I can just wait them out to show it up because I don't think that we're going to have shows for a while at this rate. So those are my dummies of the week. Gunner, you got one? The entire RNC. I mean, that's it. <laughs> that whole, the whole, yeah. Group, that's it. Yeah. Um, I do have one more. <laughs> what else is there? I have one more I forgot. So <laughs> Warner Brothers, in their infinite wisdom, is just like, yo, we don't care if you get COVID. Go see Titted in theaters. And they messed up because um, they said this thing yeah. where it's like, yo, drive in theaters, you have to have the, the film playing in your area in theaters. So you can't go to a drive in unless it's playing in the theater in that same area. What? Hey, dude. I go to a drive-in and watch it because I can stay in my car and I don't have to roll the windows down anymore. So, but why would you prevent that? So, yeah. And then we got Tom Cruise going, I saw Tenet in theaters and loved it. Uh, Scott Derrickson, who directed the first Doctor Strange film, was like, no, you're an idiot if you go to a theater right now during this pandemic because you're going to be one of the reasons why this stupid thing is still going on because you're too selfish to not just stay home and wear stupid masks. It's very yeah. fun. And Tom, like, they probably sent you a screener. Oh, my gosh. They probably they closed the theater, theater for him. <laughs> like, yeah. come on, man. Like, we like you, but you're not. Like, like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's not like he had... Uh, Raekwon sit next to him with a cell phone and his mask off because he's talking on the phone next to people. I, I feel like that didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> just just not thinking it. Javon, you got one, man? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> um, I got two. Uh, right. One is this kid, Takashi69, who after he trolled LA, look, I don't follow the street thing and and, and this is the thing about it. I'm 40 years old. I don't have any skin in that in, in, in what's going on. It's, it's the teenage culture now. You know, this is a young man's thing, the whole hip hop thing, whatever. Once you get to my age, for those of our young listeners, you don't care <laughs> what's going on. It's passed you by. You're stuck in your era. It's going to happen. You will become your parents. Trust me. It was just better <laughs> when I was, a, you know, it, it was just mm-hmm. better when I was a part of it. You know, that's how we all feel. All right. of us will feel that way, right? But to say that, to say this, with this kid, you, you, you know, you're trolling a lot of people. You're doing this whole thing because that's a part of your, your shtick, I guess, now. You're not using for this whole snitch thing, and I don't even know what that was about. And I just know what was protection? out in the news. Huh? And he in witness protection? I don't know, maybe I, I would pray that he, he is to be with some of the shit that he's doing. He I'm needs serious. To be like, from basically all of New York. I'm serious. <laughs> I'm serious. I, you know, Jace, I think this. When I look at this and what my daughter's told me is like this. The kid is doing this for, as they says, the kids say clout. 
<laughs> he's doing this for the clout. He's doing this to be out there to keep promoting his brand. His brand is not music anymore, which I don't think it ever was based on his look. His brand was getting attention. These TikToks or whatever these kids do to keep themselves out there, because now you can be a millionaire by doing nothing at all. And I mean, we all need to get in on this, right? But this kid is made a brand of being a troll for what it's worth. And now after he's trolled in LA and the gang culture out there, he's now in Chicago doing it. And it's like, dude, you gotta be careful. <laughs> you gotta be careful because these kids, some of these kids are, are, are taking this really serious. Like this is their lives. So when you're out there saying F this gang, F that gang, you're really disrespecting people and what they, they stand up and, and, and will shoot and die for. They just killed the kid out there. What was his name? Like two weeks ago or something like that, one of the Chicago rappers. And they are, they're known to have beef. Like when you watch these things about what's going on out there, man, and how these rappers in Chicago, these kids are killing each other, man. They're playing real life Call of Duty out there. It's no joke. They're shooting. Real bullets, real guns, Flash. Thin movie, you know? It's it's for real, and for him to be out there playing, and I know that he's got some sort of witness protection, and he's probably filming himself in locations at, at like uh, uh, 6 a.m. on a Sunday morning, and then by the time the video is posted, it's like 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and he's already... Yeah, he's already in the next city or something like that. <laughs> but you got to be careful, man. That these pe- some of these kids, man, they they live and die for this kind of shit, man. It, 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 it's not it's not good for you to be doing. You're putting yourself at risk for what? You know, you already got the money. Relax, take a chill. Um, next up is the whole Reds. The, I can't even say the Redskins. The, it's the Washington Silly Nannies or the the Butterflies or whatever they're gonna be. Washington here. football team. The Washington football team is at it again, back in the news. It's like, look, I've never seen a more cor- a cursed organization like this. We've never seen this before. Look at the last, ca- dude, look at the last calendar year, two years for this franchise. From Alex Smith to Darius Geis' whole career, Jordan Reed, uh, 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 Jay Gruden. <laughs> uh, the new coach, Ron Rivera, the, the Bruce Ron. Allen fiasco. Poor Ron. I mean, nobody's asked. He's not. He didn't ask for this. No, nah, because he, he didn't want to leave Carolina. He, he didn't. I, I anyway, wouldn't. I, I wouldn't I'm happy to here. I'm doing my thing. New owner game. I want a new coach. He's mm-hmm. like, ah, I guess I got to keep working. Coach. So, jeez. Yeah. Uh, I got to take a job. Unfortunately, <laughs> this is what happens. You got to take a job. I would have been a coordinator for anybody. I would have been a coordinator for the, the, the damn Milwaukee Bucks at this point. I, I'm not touching the Redskins. I'm not touching them. Right? The WFT, so, Javon. Get it right. Take, right. The WFT. Exactly. <laughs> or just replace the T with the F. You know? Exactly. Just transfer them. Jeff, I, you know, I, this franchise is so buzzard luck. And this is another, what we just found out today, or what broke yeah. today, is just another story. Snyder had a what happened? Really nude photo of a cheerleader, and there was some, I mean, the dude is just, gosh, he, hey, he can write a hey, book Jeff. on how to capsize your own franchise. Hey, Jeff, it wasn't just cheerleader or cheerleaders. This was just women who worked for the organization. From the cheerleaders <laughs> to women who worked for the organization. Oh, you're the beer lady, and you got nice. You got a nice set. Oh yeah, I want to see you in this special project. It's supposed to be like a ten minute video of just women's lady parts who oh, work in the man. organization. This, this dude. Gosh. <laughs> okay. How old? Oh, After this comes out, do they say, "All right, Dan, it's time to go." Dan is not leaving. They are literally, he is he leaving. is gonna he's like his hero Jerry Jones. You're gonna have to carry his dead body out of that franchise. He is going no this is what I keep telling people. Hey, he's like Shy, bad boy. Yeah. Hey Shy walking on the field nude in in, in a feathered boa. <laughs> hey, a feathered boa might be <laughs> that would also be offensive. <laughs> And even and even then, it's debatable whether or not the NFL would step in. 
Roger would be like, I mean, if the he colors were pink. under a lot of stress. Yeah, the he colors were pink. under a lot of stress. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He ain't right. going away, unfortunately. Nah, dude. Well, we are going to go somewhere because we got to wrap this episode up. But, fellas, thank y'all, as always, for rolling. Sorry for being late. I appreciate y'all staying on with me. Thank y'all out there for listening. This episode of Lyle's Movie Files has been filed. <laughs>